Welcome to a very special edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series. On this edition, we had the honor of interviewing the legendary tenor saxophonist Sonny Rollins. During a very open, raw, and revealing conversation, Sonny spoke about a huge number of things, beginning with his new live albums that have been dispersed in three volumes called Road Shows, and they're very impressive, and moving on into what it's like to play live, what he's learned from musicians over the years, about being famous, and so many other things. Please dig it, my friends. Yes, Mr. Rollins. Yes. Yes, this is Joe Domino with Neon Jazz in Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, yes, right. We had an interview today. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Wonderful. Are you ready to go with the interview? Yes, I'm all, I'm all set. Okay, so let's go. Okay, let me start off with asking about your roadshow volumes. How did this come about? Well, you know, people have been telling me that uh, they liked my performances in person, in my concert performances. And um, uh, so I said, okay, yeah, I guess we have some good uh, communication with the audiences in my uh, concert performances. So, and I ma had made a few studio records, and then I said, well, wait a minute. Why don't I just produce an album of... Uh, the best studio performances that I have that's been recorded. And uh, I'll start a series, road shows, which are shows on the road. Right on. Uh, so that's what happened, and that was Road Shows Volume 1, and then uh, we went to Road Shows Volume 2 with a lot of uh, uh, my friends on there. And uh, this is Road Shows Volume 3, so I would like to continue this um, uh, as long as I can find some material. And I have a lot of things, uh, but uh, that's how, that was the genesis of the Road Shows uh, series. Excellent. So let me ask you this, what was your first experience playing live like? Well, you know, you asking me to go back quite a many a few years, you know that, don't you? Yeah, I just thought I would ask just because this is live. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I, I always wanted to play and that was always my uh, lifelong ambition uh, from a uh, when I was uh, pretty early. I got my saxophone around seven and all this kind of stuff. Um... I, I, when I, when I first played, it was just, uh, it was, it was marvelous. It was, it was like heaven on earth hmm. when I played for the, for the first time. It was just a, a most, uh, beautiful experience that we can have uh, here on earth. Wonderful. I've lived a long time since then, and I realized uh, looking back, that that is the most uh, greatest way I can communicate with nature and the heavens and whatever is by playing. So that's the feeling I had when I first played, and it's still it's still there. It's still there. Wonderful. Let me ask you this: What did you want to teach the musicians you played with over the years? What did you want to teach them about jazz and about life? Well, I never thought that I would um, really be able to, uh, you know, uh, I, well, well, the first thing, I'll put it this way, you know, when uh, I, I first started working with Miles David some years ago, uh, and guys would come to the band and, it's, and, and they would want to know, to ask Miles, well, see, uh, or what, what should... So Mom said, well, look, man, if you're playing with me, you're supposed to know what to do. I don't want to be telling you, oh, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that. If you're up here playing with me, you're supposed to know. That was Miles. I always remembered Miles. So, and this really is true. So when guys play with me, 
I don't really want to teach them anything. If they're playing with me, they should really have the control of the instruments. They should have the musical knowledge to be able, now sure, I'll still uh, suggest uh, material and something like that that I want to do. But basically, I don't interfere with guys that I play with because I expect them to be on a certain level. So let, let me ask you this. Speaking of musicians you played with over the years, those musicians that have gone in different directions or those that left us too soon, unfortunately, who do you miss playing with? Well, I, um... Boy, that's a hard question. I, uh... That's, that's a hard question. Uh, all of those guys were so great. I mean, I, uh, Monk, the Thelonious Monk was sort of my, uh, sort of the closest guy in a way, sort of my, but I like playing with Miles. I'm, you know, I, it, it, it's very hard to answer that question because I played with these guys uh, at a certain time in their career. Uh well, a monk was always the same. Coltrane was, he changed a little bit. And, uh, the miles changed a little bit in, in what they're doing. But uh, I would say any of those people, would, I would have uh, J.J. Johnson, the great trombonist. I would, uh, I miss playing with all of them in, in the sense of remembering how wonderful it was to be in their presence. Yeah. Uh, however, I don't, it's not something that I uh, lament about it because uh, this is, this is what life is. We, we have experiences, we do the best we can, and that's life. We don't feel sorry for my, in other words, that sort of suggests that, gee, well, too bad I can't play with Miles anymore. And that's not the way I think. Sure. It's great playing with those, a beautiful experience playing with those people, learning from them. All those guys that played that one, I played with, I played with Leslie Young, the great Leslie Young, I played with Coleman Hawkins. It was great playing with those guys. And, uh, uh, hey, what? What do I, yeah, I appreciate playing with them, but um, I don't uh, miss it in a way that um, it's too bad that I can't play with them again. No, sure. that, no, it's not like that. It was a beautiful uh, experience for me, a beautiful blessing for me to play with some of these uh, greatest musicians of all time in the world, and uh, that's the way I look at it. Absolutely. Let me ask you a question, Sonny. Do you like being famous? <laughs> well, the, am I famous? Ah, uh, I think so. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes um, I think I'm, you know, I remember uh, a couple of years ago and so, and I'd be uh, a champ, you know, we'd be in the airport or something, and. Uh, Sometimes somebody would uh, recognize me, at least it'd come up to me, or, and sometimes they wouldn't. So, I mean, fame, like that kind of, and which is good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be like, uh, uh, say, Frank Sinatra or something. Everybody would know who he was and would, he would have to go places in a guarded car or something. Yeah. So, I, yeah, some people recognize who I am, and, uh, it's okay, and uh, as far as uh, being famous, well, I want to live a exemplary life where I, if I'm famous and people know about me, then I want to leave a positive message to people. See, I want to represent myself as being somebody that they can look up to. I'm learning so bad. This is what I'm doing. I'm not doing this for people. I'm doing this for myself. Sure. See, I, 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 I'm very interested in uh, uh, self-improvement and all of these things that, that we go through in life. So I want to be an example. So being famous, if 
if I could uh, uh, live my life in a positive way, then being famous, whatever fame I have, is good because then people go, oh, gee, uh, gee, Sonny Rollins uh, helped this old lady uh, that was falling down in the street. When that's good. Then I'll, that's using fame for something. Let me ask you this. What's the nicest thing a fan has ever said or done for you? Well, of course, I, that's very hard for me. But recently, a fan, there, there was a um, contest on uh, my website about uh, to, to get involved in a, um, a, a Google Skype thing where I would be answering questions of students. And uh, so people had to send in applications uh, to ask a question of Sonny Rollins, and then they'd have one follow-up question. So a guy, I think he was in Korea or someplace, I don't remember, but he said, he, by the way, he didn't win the contest, contest so I never uh, got a chance to speak to him face-to-face. Uh, -face. But anyway... He said that um, when he listened to my music, it was it it was it was not like music. It was something different. It took him to different places. It was not even comparable to music. It just gave him a, a, a glimpse of a positive uh, space in the world, whatever it was. Wonderful. And that and that's what my music meant to him. So that was something recently that I remember that uh, touched me. You know, in in a brilliant career that spanned for many years for you, what has been your key to longevity? Well, um, that's an interesting question. Um, I guess you can always say uh, genetics and uh, you know choosing the right mother and father and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> And uh, but I I am I feel it's more than that. I feel that each human being, you, me, my mother, your sister, your cousin, my my friend of the street, every human being is put here for a reason. Is put here for a reason. Life is not random. It's life. Is not random. It, everything means something. Mm -hmm. So, what's my my longevity is for some reason that I was put here, and that's purely a, uh, a metaphysical, whatever kind of way you want to describe it. But I just was a guy that. Uh, you know, was uh, was meant to be just uh, long living as long as I have and playing as long as I have. And of course, in my life, I have tried to uh, have done some good things. I've, I've gotten into health foods and exercising way back in the 1950s. And I've done some of that. I think that's helped me uh, in some way. But Basically, I think that it, we were ordained to be who we are. Absolutely. And that's why my longevity is existent. Right on. So, has jazz made the world a better place? Well, I used to think that when, when we started out, uh, uh, when I when we started out, but back in the 60s and so, 50s, uh, there was a lot of feeling among us that our music was so positive and so right that it's going to make the world a better place. Now, uh, of course, I was soon disabused of that. I realized that the world is not a better place uh, because of music. The world is not a better place because of anything. It might be in the very individual cases. Somebody might... Uh, hear jazz and, and uh, it might excite something in them that makes them a better person. But all these are objective terms. Who knows what's better for you is going to be uh, bad for somebody else. What's bad for somebody else is going to be better for you. This is how this world was made. 
And the world, contrary to what I once thought, the world is never going to change. This world will always be uh, uh, full of um, negativity, positivity, a good quote, bad quote, a loving quote, hating. For that's what this world is. That that's not going to change. Yeah. Now, jazz has has made. I think jazz is a very positive force in that. It expresses um, something of a very um, uh, natural order, you see. So, uh, uh, but see, again, I used to think that, that uh, like that. Oh, jazz is great music, but then people think, oh, jazz is terrible music. Jazz causes bad things. Uh, there, uh, there's a, a woman that's coming out with a book now, as a matter of fact, uh, about her husband, I think the title is "Oh Jazz Junkie," me and my jazz junkie husband. So the images about jazz that are bad, yeah. And people are going to look at jazz as oh, what a terrible. So how can I say that? For me, jazz is a positive thing. I've met beautiful people of all races, religions, sex. Sex, S E C T S, mm -hmm. all over the world. Yeah. I've got friends all over the world. I've got people tell me, oh, it's gee, Sonny, listening to your music has given me strength and inspiration to just get up in the fucking morning. Yeah. So, yes, jazz is positive, but to some people in the world, jazz is negative. Sure. So, I mean, there, there, there's no answer to that question. Let me ask you a question. After 50-plus uh, albums, what has been your favorite period of recording or your favorite set of albums? Well, you know, that's funny. Somebody was asked me that. I, I, I am a very, very self-critical person. You know, I'm very self-critical, and I'm always practicing. I'm always practicing. I'm never content with what I've done before. In fact, I'm ashamed of what I've done before often. Hmm. So to me, uh, you know, I've been asked, well, gee, Sonny, what do you think about uh, your album? Said, well, look, my favorite album is yet to be made. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't sit back when I come in at night and, and put on Sonny Rollins records. I want to, my next, I'm far from where, well, I wouldn't say I'm far, but I have a ways to go before I can make a record that I really feel I'm doing what I was put here to do. See, so yeah. I don't, I, I can't answer that. There's no, you know, there's some records in my career that are better than others and all that, but I, I can't think like that. I have to think in the future, which is going to be better. Speaking of, what's next for you in your career? Well, uh, on a on a day-by-day -day basis, I'm planning my next uh, album, which is going to be a studio album. Uh, it's not going to be road shows. Uh, the next one I want to make is a studio album. I'm working on uh, that. I'm working on the uh, uh, the material. I'm working on the concepts. I'm thinking about the people I want to use. And so, in 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 the fact, in in an everyday sense, uh, that's what's happening next uh, in, in in my life. Uh, musically. Uh, now, your question was what through, what was your question again? My, my question was what's next? What else do you want to accomplish in your career? Oh, wow. Well, what I want to accomplish? Well, one thing I want to accomplish, I want to be a, uh, a, uh, make a, a, uh, record and, and get a little better musically and so I can satisfy myself to some extent. And I want to make myself a better individual. 
I want to make myself a better person. So there are certain things that I believe in uh, that I want to make myself. I want to make myself a kinder person, a more understanding person, a person with more wisdom, a person with more, just a better understanding of, of, of what I'm here to do, what my possibilities as a human being are. I want to make that happen. So as long as I'm alive, like this morning, and we're speaking to each other, there's the a possibility of being a better person. And wow. so there is a lot that I want to do uh, in the next to Sonny Rollins. Right on. It's a whole open universe that I'm trying to get better at. Beautiful. In every way. In every way. Sure. Everything I do, you know, I was talking to somebody, everything you do, not just Victor, every little thing you do in the morning, you get up, you, okay, you go, you brush your teeth, whatever. everything that you do is important. You go out, you go in the street, you do whatever, everything means something. Every movement that you make, every act that, that you uh, engage in. Everything is important. There's nothing random about this whole universe. It seems that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're living here on Earth where you've got all crazy stuff happening. It seems like it's random, but it's not random. And so my, my uh, uh, goal, my task is to make sure that everything I do, every act I do, is of a positive nature. It's something I can look myself in the eyes about when I'm shaving or whatever, say, did I do the right thing? Am I ashamed of myself? Did I not help pick up that lady who was crossing the street? You know, that kind of stuff. That's what I want to get to the point where I'm better and I'm better, and I'm better, and I'm better, and that to me is what life is about. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm not here to eat Haggins Dash ice cream. <laughs> or gee, let me see, oh yeah, let's go out and, and uh, see the new movie. That, that to me is a waste of this precious life. Yeah. See? So for me, it's about that. It's not about anything else but trying to improve myself, trying to improve my music, and uh, that's it. And it's a wonderful opportunity. So that's where Sonny Rollins is as of uh, May uh, uh, 2014. Right on. Let me ask you, I got two more questions for you, and I want to know, what, what, what is going through your head when you hear someone like President Clinton or President Obama talking about the effect your music has on them? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm deeply honored. I mean, and it's, I mean, it's well, honored is sort of a, not the right word, but I'm happy I'm happy that uh, I could contribute in some way, assuming that President Obama and President Clinton have done something good for humanity. Let me put it that way. Yeah. I mean, if it, I mean, if it was somebody like Hitler or Mussolini or Didi Amin or one of these people, and they say, "Oh, I love Sonny Rollins," then I wouldn't be so happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But assuming that they are doing something worthwhile, uh, then, then yeah, I'm very happy. I'm very happy that they got some kind of inspiration from me. And, and it puts me, you know, I mean, it's almost a, a, a beyond what I can explain. I mean, it has... You know what I always say about that? I was given a musical gift. Mm -hmm. I didn't create it. I was born with a gift. Yeah. Many of the guys I was born with, we all wanted to be jazz musicians. I was the one that had the gift. 
Yeah. So when I when you say, well, gee, uh, President Obama and President Clinton really got something in their lives from you, well, that's fine. That's a divine force working. I didn't give myself that gift. God gave me that gift. Sure. See, so I I feel. Uh, you know, I feel good about it. As I said, if these people are representing something good in the world, then yeah, then I feel good about it, you know. But uh, I can't take too much credit for it at the same time because I was put here to do what I'm doing. Sure. You know, sure, I studied and I practiced all the time and tried to get better, but I had a gift. I didn't create that gift. That gift was given to me. Sure. So I'm very happy to hear that when uh, uh, great people in our world, presidents, et cetera, et cetera, uh, say that, oh, gee, Sonny, your music helped me uh, through my life. Great. I'm very happy about that. But I think it's part of a bigger plan. It's not part of Sonny Rollins. I'm just part of the picture. Yeah. That has nothing to do with Sonny Rollins per se. Sure. Sonny Rollins is just a part of the plan. Yeah. Right on. Since we're coming out of Kansas City here, do you have any memories of gigging here in Kansas City that you would talk about? Well, I did play in Kansas City only one time in my life. And uh, knowing the history of Kansas City, it was a very uh, moving experience for me. Uh, just to uh, be playing in Kansas City, uh-huh. and um, it, you know, so I was, I was, I was very uh, 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 touched uh, by having that uh, chance to play in Kansas City, uh, since I know so much about the great music that was made there in the uh, uh, years uh, before I got there. Sure. And um, other than that, well, I would say also my. Uh, my my uh, uh, life's partner uh, was from Kansas City. Oh, okay. And uh, so uh, that's also uh, something that uh, was very uh, uh, endearing to me about Kansas City. Wonderful. And uh, so, hey, my thumbs up for Kansas City. <laughs> right on. Sonny, thank you very much for your time. It's been an honor, and you're you're a beautiful musician, and I, it's been so nice to get an insight into who you are. You're awesome. I, I really appreciate your time today. Okay, well, good luck with the station, and, and, and I hope people don't tune out now that they heard me. No, 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 they're going to tune in now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Good luck to you. Okay, bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz, a very special edition of the interviews, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the USA, giving fans all that jazz. And a very special thanks to the legendary Sonny Rollins for his time, wisdom, and graciousness. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, or you can visit the neonjazz.blogspot.com for all things neon jazz. Until next time, enjoy the music, my friends. Neon Jazz.